Today, I'm working on the final testing steps before actually building AlphaSource in the Antec Canon chassis. If you wanna avoid a lot of headaches and problems, don't miss these steps. Welcome back to the channel, and today we're gonna to be installing Windows 11 Pro as well as drivers and other updates, and then we're gonna be stress testing the system to flush out any issues. Let's get to it. I bought Windows 11 Pro that comes on a USB drive, but if you didn't and just have a code, you can download Windows 11 and create your own boot drive. I'll be making a video covering this in the near future. I'm just going to take the USB drive and plug it into the rear I.O., where it will then be accessed by the motherboard to boot from. So to be able to access the boot drive, we need to navigate to the boot section of the BIOS. And we can see that boot option one is KDI Microsoft Windows 10. I'm not sure why it's labeled Windows 10 as it is Windows 11, probably just something on the formatting side. But here we can see that we don't have any other boot options. So this is gonna boot into the USB drive when we save and exit. So we're gonna save changes and reset, and then this motherboard is gonna reboot and boot into the USB drive. So from here, we can run through the Windows installation. Go ahead and select your language, your time and currency format, as well as your keyboard input method. From here, we're just gonna click Install Now since this is a fresh Windows install. So I do have a product key, but I'm not going to put it in right now. I'm just gonna click I don't have a product key and I'll activate Windows once we're booted into it. So here's all the operating systems that you can install. I'm gonna go ahead and select Windows 11 Pro since that's the operating system I purchased. Can scroll through and read this if you would like, otherwise hit I accept the Microsoft's license terms. So if you have a Windows install already, so let's say you're just rebuilding your computer and you're transferring a hard drive, you could upgrade and use this option here, which will keep file settings and applications. However, since this is a fresh install, we have to use custom. Since I decided to use a one terabyte SSD, this is the drive right here. We can see the size of the drive over here. So we know that this is the OS drive that I wanna select. So we're gonna select this and then we're gonna hit next. And then it's gonna run through its installation process. The system will most likely shut down several times to complete the setup, but you can just let your computer sit here and install. So here we're in the Windows 11 setup and you can go ahead and select your country. Since again, I'm in the United States, we're gonna go ahead and select the United States, US keyboard layout. And I do not wanna add a second keyboard layout, so I'll skip that. I don't have anything connected to the internet right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and click I don't have internet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say continue with limited setup. I'm going to enter my name, so we're going to enter Tectonic Systems, we're going to hit next, we're going to hit a password here, we'll confirm the password, and then go ahead and select your security questions. So these are privacy settings. You can choose which ones you would like to turn on or off. For me, I'm just gonna keep these on here and turn the other ones off. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. Windows will then get things ready for you. It might take a few minutes. But as it runs through this, it will then show up with your desktop. So 
So here we are at the Windows 11 desktop and that's all there is to installing Windows. Now we can get on to installing drivers and configuring some things so that we can move on to the tests that we need to conduct to make sure that everything is stable. So Asus shipped a thumb drive with a bunch of drivers on it. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in now and start installing the drivers so we can get this computer hooked up to the internet and continue with all the tests that we have to conduct. So this might look a little bit weird set up as a CD drive, but it's set up that way as when you double click on it, it just launches right into the setup application, which makes everything much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna go over and click driver. I'm not gonna install Google Chrome right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and install all the drivers that my system says I don't have installed. So over in this column, we can see the installed version and the available version. You can see that we don't have anything installed except for the LAN driver, and these are the available versions. So I'm gonna leave all these checked and we're gonna hit install. During this, it's gonna reboot the system one time, so don't be alarmed if your computer restarts, just let it restart. Don't push any buttons and just let everything install. So we can see we have about 22 minutes of time for the installation to complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run through and I'll be back when it's finished. Okay, the driver installation is complete and we're gonna go ahead and restart the computer. So we're back in the operating system and I've plugged in the Wi-Fi adapter for the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you don't know how to do that, you can just go down in the right hand corner to this globe icon. You can see no internet access, but connections are available. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click on that and it'll bring up a window here and you can click on the arrow right here that says manage Wi-Fi connections. From there, you can select your network, input your password to connect to your Wi-Fi, and you should be connected. I'm gonna go ahead and do this now and I'll be right back. So the first step after installing drivers and connecting to the internet is going to be everyone's favorite step, installing Windows updates. Unfortunately, this is something that needs to be done as there's a lot of important security fixes within these updates and I recommend that you go ahead and download and install all of the updates. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to download and install all the Windows updates and let that run. So as you can see, we're now up to date with Windows, which is awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and update the BIOS of the motherboard. Okay, so we are on the rog.asus.com website. We're at the ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme motherboard. We're in the driver and utility section under support. And we're under the BIOS and firmware download section. So from here, you can see that we have a BIOS update. We have a firmware update for the audio chip, and we also have an Intel ME update. So here we can see the version number. And then if we go to look at Armory Crate, we can see that we're running version 0401 and the updated version is 0816. And that was released February 24th, 2023. So we want to go ahead and download this as well. We're also going to download this firmware for the audio chip. And we're also going to download the Intel ME update tool. So here we see that before we update the BIOS, we have to download the Intel ME update tool and we need to use version 16.1.25.2020 to ensure optimized system settings. And we can see that that's the correct version down here. So we're gonna go ahead and run this update tool first. So we'll go ahead to the downloads and we will extract this update tool right to the downloads folder. We'll go ahead and we will run the ME update tool. So we're gonna go ahead and close everything down per the suggestion here, including Armory Crate. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes. 
So if you're running BitLocker, heed this warning and follow the steps here before you continue updating. Since I'm not running BitLocker, I don't have to worry about this. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit yes. And we're gonna let it update. Once the update is complete, this box is going to show up and we're just going to press OK and the system is going to reboot. So the system did a hard reset. So you're going to want to let the system just turn back on. Don't push the power button. Just let it do its thing and it will reboot. The last we have the BIOS to install and we've downloaded and installed the Intel ME update for the firmware to this version. So now we just have to use the BIOS flashback tool to rename the BIOS file to this right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna extract the BIOS update. And then we have the BIOS renamer right here. And this is also the BIOS update file. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this to rename this. So this says the file has been renamed to this which we can check it's correct. We can press any key to continue. So we have to put this file now into the root of a USB flash drive. Now we have the USB drive that Asus sent with the motherboard, and this is where I'm gonna put the BIOS update. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna open this in a new window. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna drag this into the USB drive can go ahead and close that out. We can eject the USB drive. So we're ready now for a BIOS update. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the system down and show what needs to happen on the back of the IO panel to update the BIOS. So to update the BIOS on the motherboard, I'm gonna plug the flash drive into this USB port right here that's labeled BIOS. From there, I'm gonna boot up the system. So now that the USB drive is in the BIOS slot, I'm gonna go ahead and boot up the system and get into the BIOS. So here we are in the BIOS, and we're gonna go ahead and go over to Tool. We're gonna to use the Asus Flash 3 Utility. We're gonna hit Enter there. We're gonna to go to the storage device that we have installed. And we can see there's the BIOS update. So we're gonna go ahead and select and load that file. Again, if you're using BitLocker, back up your recovery key and suspend the encryption and then go ahead with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. Also gonna hit yes, because I do want to read this file. So go ahead and verify that this is the correct model of motherboard that you have and the version that you downloaded. And then we can go ahead and hit yes. As you can see, we're processing the update. You can go ahead and let this process. Don't touch anything. Let the system work. Ensure that you don't turn your motherboard off during this process as it is extremely important for it to complete without being interrupted. And it could cause some serious problems with your motherboard if it does get interrupted. So we see it's updated successfully and it's gonna turn off on its own and just let it turn off, it will turn back on. Again, it's continuing to update. So again, don't shut down or reset the system while it's doing this, just let it run no matter how long it takes. So the system just shut off again on its own and restarted. Okay, so here we can see the motherboard and the BIOS update revision 0816, which is what we installed. So we can go ahead and hit F1 to run setup. Here we can see the BIOS version again. Everything is looking good. We can go and check our boot device. And we can see we have a Windows Boot Manager, the DIMM.2 slot, the Western Digital Black SN850X, so that's great. Boot option two. This isn't gonna exist once we unplug the USB stick, but everything looks good for now. We can go ahead and exit now. We can save changes and reset. All right, and that's how you update the BIOS.
Now that everything's been downloaded and installed driver-wise, it's time to start stress testing the system. So Cinebench is gonna stress test your CPU specifically, and I have Armory Crate to monitor the temperature and the frequency, and we can just make sure everything is staying within the correct parameters. But the point of this test is to make sure that your system doesn't crash when it is at a full CPU load. Now, if you are running your final cooling system, which I'm not in this case, you are gonna wanna make sure that your CPU isn't thermal throttling with your final cooling solution. If that's the case, you're gonna need to either reapply thermal paste or look into a much better cooling solution for your processor. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started and we're gonna run it at 15 minutes just because we're not using the final cooling solution. If you are using your final cooling solution, run this test for 30 minutes. That way you can get a full heat saturation in the system and make sure everything is running properly. I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. So here you can see that the test cooling system that I have on right now is not sufficient for this processor. Uh, it had to cut the frequency back uh, to keep it at 89 Celsius, but that's actually good. It's showing that the system is able to recognize when it's too hot and bring it back so that it cools it off and keeps it within a normal temperature. We're just gonna let this go and make sure that no errors occur. And once we get the final cooling solution installed, we'll come back in the Cinebench once it's all built and make sure that our, our system is not running too hot. So here we're winding down to the final few seconds of the tests and we haven't run into any errors, which means that this processor and the system is stable in that sense. We have two bench tests to go after this one and I'm gonna get into those right now. I'm gonna be using this Benchmark Superposition 2017 from Benchmark Uni Engine. They also have Heaven, which is a pretty popular benchmarking tool, but I'm gonna use this one and we're gonna download it and install it. And once this is done downloading, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the system down and install the standalone GPU restart the system and we're going to run this benchmark for about 15 minutes just to stress test the GPU and make sure everything's good. So I've installed my standalone GPU but I decided to go ahead and run memtest86 just to test the RAM as I can access it through my BIOS. However if your motherboard didn't come with memtest86 you're going to have to create a bootable USB drive with memtest86 on it and boot to the USB drive to run it. I'll have a video later explaining just how to do this, but for now I'm just gonna run through Memtest 86 to stress test the memory and make sure everything is good with the RAM. So it's gonna load up Memtest. And it's gonna go ahead and test. Okay, so once Memtest 86 completes, you're either gonna get a pass or fail screen. In this case, we got a pass. And we're gonna go ahead and display the summary of the test. So here we see the summary and we can see that it took almost five hours. So I let this run overnight. You can see that we have zero errors. So the RAM is doing really well. So I'm gonna go and exit. We're gonna go ahead and stress test the GPU now. So first I'm gonna run the superposition benchmark here at 4K optimized. So we're just gonna go ahead and click run and we're gonna see how this GPU does. We're gonna see if there's any errors or artifacting or crashes and continue from there. benchmark was successful. I didn't see any graphical glitches. There weren't any crashes. So this thing is looking pretty good. So I also downloaded Heaven, which is also another great benchmarking slash stress testing tool. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to look for any graphical artifacts or any crashes. And once it's complete and if it's successful, then this system is done being tested. And I'm confident that it is not going to be crashing on a regular basis. So you can let this run for about 15 minutes or however long you would like to to stress test your system. But once you're finished and you don't see any 
graphical artifacts or there hasn't been any crashes, you can go ahead and close out and be finished with this. Once you've updated and successfully completed the stress test, you can conclude that you're not gonna have any major stability issues. You now have the confidence in that and you can move forward with building your actual system, knowing that you're not wasting your time on faulty components or a system that isn't working properly. Now, if your system did fail any of the tests, it's best to reach out to the manufacturer of the specific component that failed as they'll be able to provide more information on how to troubleshoot and or start the warranty process to replace that faulty component. I'll definitely be covering troubleshooting in future videos and that'll arm you with the knowledge to start troubleshooting your systems. That way you can narrow down exactly what the problem might be. These testing steps may be a bit tedious and take up some time, but you're gonna thank yourself if you do uncover any instability issues or faulty components and get it taken care of before you actually build your system. Now that I've finished these testing steps, I can go ahead and start building AlphaSource and I'm really excited to get started. You can check out other Tectonic Systems videos, including other steps you can take to test your system while it's outside of the case by clicking here. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.